name is Massimo Banzi and I'm one of the co-founders of Arduino. And welcome to another series of videos about the Arduino robot sponsored by RS Components. In the next five videos, David Quartieres, also a co-founder of Arduino, and Hyun Yang from the Arduino team in Sweden, are going to guide you through all the steps needed to set up the robot, program it, and make it do amazing things. So in the video that's about to begin, they're going to teach you how to take the robot out of the box, set it up, configure it, and get it working. So I hope you enjoy it as much as we enjoyed making it. Hello, this is David. Hello, this is Shin. We are here today to talk to you about the Arduino robot. This robot has been co-designed by Arduino together with Complubot. Complubot is a robotics association based in Spain, made by Nerea, Ivan and Eduardo, that are world experts in educational robotics. They have a long experience competing at the RoboCup Junior, where they have been earning several awards in the last years. So we spent some time working with them, designing and manufacturing the Arduino robot. So Jun, would you make the honors of unboxing this Sure, movie? let's do it. So the robot comes with a quite sturdy box to make sure it's box. coming in a good condition. This is a menu. This is the instructions manual that will help you getting started on how to find information about the robot and software. Mm -hmm. LCD screen. This is a screen. It's a standard Arduino screen. You can use it to show different information on the robot. You can also use it in other projects. Power. This is the power supply that you can use to recharge the robot's batteries. Mm, and there's a USB cable. It's a USB cable that you would use to reprogram the robot in different ways. SD card. This is a micro SD card that comes with preloaded images and music that can play with the robot. Then the robot. Finally, the mm. robot. <clears throat> so, I'm going to guide you now on how to make the basic installation of the different parts on top of the robot. You need to mount the screen on top of this connector in the robot. The robot will obviously operate without the screen, but the screen will help you get a much better experience. So, just need to unbox the screen. Box. And you need the micro SD card that stores the necessary files for running some of the examples. The files come preloaded from the factory. You just need to plug it into the micro SD card reader that comes with the screen. Just plug it this way. And then you just need to plug the screen on top of the robot in this way. So you see the screen comes with a small sticker marking uh, more or less in which position you should connect the screen on top of the robot so the sticker comes by the speaker. You can remove this marker afterwards. So now your robot is ready to work. It comes with an example preloaded, it's called the Hello World example. And I will ask June to guide you through this example. In this example, you basically store your own name and the robot's uh, name of choice uh, in the robot's memory. June? So the robot comes with four AA rechargeable batteries and um, make sure to charge them with a power socket before you uh, start running it. And uh, this unit is already charged. Let's just turn it on by switching the power switch. So first it's going to choose the uh, Arduino and uh, Complubot logos. And now there's uh, some instructions about how to uh, interact with this example. Basically, there's a virtual keyboard and you can use a, a potential meter to uh, choose letters and the keyboard to navigate. So, um, first I want to input my name for the robot, which is Shin. Enter. Now it's the name of the robot. Mm, let's call it bot. Enter. Okay, so now the robot is giving me a welcome and uh, asking me to plug it into the computer and start programming with it. Thank you. So you will have noticed that uh, it says here, hello June. 
and this is because the robot has stored June's name in its EEPROM chip. So you can use this chip to store different variables that you might be interested in regarding the configuration of the robot, so you can call them from different programs. So we're going to start programming, and for programming the robot, the first thing is that you should turn off the power switch, as, as I just did, and you will see that the robot has two different boards and one USB connector on each board. So the board on the top is called the control board and it's the one we will be programming on. The one on the bottom is called the, is called the motor board. It's the one we will just reconfigure in case we want to create expert software to control the motors. For most users, you will never program the firmware on the bottom board. You can write software for the robot directly from Arduino's IDE. Uh, it's very simple and we're going to show you how to do that now. So we are now going to program the robot. Remember the robot comes with two different USB ports. The one on the motherboard is used to change the default firmware on the robot's motherboard. And we will not work with it today. We will work with the control board, the one that controls the screen, the compass, or the EEPROM, among other things. So we're going to start by programming an example that will just make the robot move back and forth. <coughs> when programming the robot, the robot wheels are blocked. In this way, you will avoid the robot of running away, carrying away your computer with it. This robot is pretty strong. It can carry up half a kilo on top of it, which means that it can probably track much more behind it. So we plug the robot to the computer, exactly like a normal Arduino Uno board. When you turn the power on, the robot will just start with the previous program hot running. Remember, we just experimented with the Hello User example, so it's going to look, boot the Hello User example. There you go. Here it is. I will just unplug it and show you what you need to have in your computer first. You should go to Arduino's website and download Arduino software. That's here on the download link. You click on it and it offers you downloads for all the three main operating systems. You should just choose the right one for your computer and install it. Remember that you might have to as well install some drivers for the robot to run. Once you have downloaded and installed the software, you can just open it and start experimenting with the different examples that come with it. For the Arduino robot, we have created two different sets of examples. There are some examples for the motherboard, as you see here, and some examples for the control board. On the control board, we have two different sets of examples again. One are called Explore, and are the 11 basic examples that would let you do almost anything uh, that you can do in the world of robotics. On the other hand, we have the Learn set of examples, that includes all sorts of more low-level examples for you to experiment with the robot. So let's start by <clears throat> making a very simple motor test on our robot. As you see here, every example for the robot needs to include the Arduino robot library. This will allow you to program the robot as if it was a single object. You could address any pin in the bottom board or the top board in the same way. It will be no problem. In this example, as you see, you're telling the robot to move forward, wait for a couple of seconds, stop the motors, wait for a second, move backwards, and so on and so forth. It's kind of like the LED blink for the Arduino robot. It's a very, very simple example that will let you understand how everything works. We plug this to the robot. Make sure we have the right board selected, which is in this case is the Arduino robot control, the right serial port selected, and upload. Now the software is in the robot, but in this case, we are just basically telling the robot to move forward, backwards, and so on. As I explained to you, when you plug in the USB power to the robot, the motors are blocked and it will not move. So right now we will see, you know, no behavior in the robot. If we unplug this and just turn the robot on, see, it's moving forward, stopping, moving backward, stopping, turning, stopping. See? Let's just put it on the table and June, you might have to help it to stop it off right away. Turning, turning again, moving forward. <laughs> okay, thank you. So you saw, for this, for this reason, we need to block the wheel so the robot doesn't run away. Uh, it's very simple to change this software. If we just wanted the robot to turn, I could just comment away a whole lot of these different lines, like this one, and just make the robot turn and then wait a little bit. 
It's very, very simple. As you see, the final program is very short. We just instantiate the Arduino robot library, start the robot, and tell the robot wheels to move, one in one direction and the other one in the other direction, and that will provoke a spinning movement of the platform in this way. Okay? So let's plug this in and upload. Once it's uploaded, I can just turn it on. Another row will just spin in circles. Stop it. <laughs> in this episode, we had a brief introduction about the robot's history. We saw what comes in the package with the robot and we saw how to plug the screen to the robot with its SD card, as well as how to make a small program that will make the robot move forward, backwards, and turn in both directions. Stay tuned, because in the next episode, you're going to see how to program a small logo example where it will be possible to program movements for the robot straight from its keyboard. And as we say in Chinese, Shai Hui Jian. Well, that was fun. So I hope you enjoyed it. And um, I'll see you at the next video where David and Kyung are going to explain to you how to run the logo example on the robot and how to use the remote control to control the robot. So, see you next time.